Welcome ladies and gentlemen. So what I'd like to do is show you how to write an equation in slope intercept form when given your m and your b. Now you might have some problems that would be very similar to this, but instead of writing m and b, they might say your slope is equal to 2 and your y intercept is equal to negative 1. Basically, this is the exact same thing. So m represents your slope, and b represents your y-intercept. So if you have a problem with slope and y-intercept, that's the same thing given at y and b. Now, to write in a slope-intercept form, we need to know what the equation is for slope-intercept form, or at least the form. And that is y equals mx plus b, where again, m represents the slope, and b is your y-intercept. Now, notice b is going to be your constant, and b is, a, is going to be where the graph crosses the y-axis where b is going to be a ratio, the comparison of the change in y over the change of x between any two points on the line, where y and x represent infinite many points on the line. So to write our equation in slope-intercept form, all we're basically going to do is plug in um, 2 in for m and negative 1 in for b. So therefore, it looks something like this. y equals 2x minus 1. OK, you could say plus, minus, plus negative 1, or just write it as minus 1. And that's it. In this case, here we have a fraction. But again, all we're simply doing is plugging it in. So this looks like y equals a negative 3 fourths x. I'll write that in red. 3 fourths x plus 7. OK? Um, now just remember, when you have a negative, that when we write the negative in front, that could be a negative 3 over 4, or it could be a 3 over negative 4. It doesn't matter where the negative is. So we always just like to write it out, out in front. Um, over here, now this one co confuses a lot of students. And this is why I decided to do so many examples, um, is because they see the fraction. And usually, we only have fractions in for slope, because slope represents the ratio. However, the y-intercept can be a fraction. You can cross the y-axis at a fraction and not an integer. So therefore, this would be y equals negative 7x plus 1 half. Okay? So it is possible for the y-intercept to be a fraction. So just don't always look at it and say, oh, fraction has to be the slope. Not always. Um, then there's a couple other ones where what about when m equals 0, or when, when we have values that equal 0? Well, again, plug them in just like you would. So y equals 0 x minus 5, really. It's plus a negative 5. I didn't do this for the other one. However, 0 times x is going to be 0. So it's y equals. And then plus a negative 5 is really just minus 5. So we can simplify it as y equals negative 5. Over here, our b is going to be equal to 0. So I do y equals 5 fourths x and then do plus 0. Well, adding 0 is not really adding. You're not, it's not going to change anything. So this would just remain as y equals 5 fourths x. And then the last example um, I thought was you know, worth noted um, going through, because a lot of students get trouble with 1. Um, they always kind of forget that 1's represented in there. So to plug it in probably might not be that bad. y equals 1 times x plus 3. However, we usually don't write 1 times x. It's just like adding 0. You don't, adding 0 is not really doing anything to the problem. Well, because 5 plus 0 is just 5. Well, same thing with multiplying by 1. 1 times 5 is just 5. So we don't really need to represent the 1 there. So we always like to write it. And usually, you'll see in your textbook, it's just y equals x plus 3. So it's just important to understand, though, that there is a y, or there is a 1 that's always there. So there you go, ladies and gentlemen. That is how you write um, an equation in slope-intercept form when given the slope and y-intercept. Thanks.